Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to update you guys on my personal 12 week fitness challenge. I cannot even believe I'm already 11 weeks in. The time has just flown by, but it has been 11 weeks. I'm on my 12th and final week. I did just want to update you guys on what's been going on because the last time I updated you guys was just on my blog. And I know some of you guys were like looking for the next video update. So without further ado, let's talk about my results over the last 11 weeks. Okay, so we're just gonna dive into it. I'm just gonna jump into the results. Um, overall, I think the most motivating thing for me throughout this entire challenge is just thinking about how the time is gonna pass anyways, so you might as well be working on your goals and doing what makes you feel good. Um, because the time is gonna pass anyway, it's really about like those choices that you're making over, um, you know, throughout your day, really on a micro scale. So far, 11 weeks in, I've, uh, I started 122.4 pounds. That was all the way back in December, December 9th. And I am now 114.8. Um, so I'm down 7.6 pounds, which is a lot of weight for me considering I don't have a, didn't have a lot of weight to lose in the first place. I really went into this looking to sort of just show more muscle definition, get a little bit leaner. It's worked. Uh, and it's been really cool to see just how easy it can be. It really doesn't have to be that difficult. Um, and uh, once you get into sort of this rhythm of figuring out what works for your body and uh, st sticking to it consistently, it just becomes your new routine, your new lifestyle, and it doesn't feel as challenging. So as far as other results, in, in addition to losing uh, 7.6 pounds, I also saw a reduction in body fat. I lost about 1% body fat and I saw an increase in my skeletal muscle mass. So overall about 0.7% increase in skeletal muscle. So I was able to really have a body recomposition over the last 11 weeks, uh, losing fat and increasing muscle at the same time, which was my goal and that is totally ideal. Um, I'd rather do that than do strict bulks and cuts. Um, in terms of my calories, so I wrote this all out on my blog, but I am gonna go into it a little bit here as well. For the first, you know, and you guys saw back in my, if you saw my other challenge videos, I stayed at my maintenance calories for a while. And because I have worked so hard over the last year uh, and few years, speeding up my metabolism, increasing my calories and lifting weights, I was starting off this challenge in a really good place, be, you know, eating around 2,000 calories per day. When I started the challenge, I actually was able to eat at my maintenance calories and just increase the intensity of my workouts and you know, consistently train five days a week instead of four and uh, clean up the contents of my nutrition. So focus on hitting my macros, focus on hitting you know, 120 grams roughly of protein per day, which is my protein goal for myself and that is one gram of protein per pound of body weight when I started the challenge around there. I also worked on really cleaning up my nutrition, just eating less processed foods, eating out a little bit less. So I generally eat out now about once a week. And when I kind of made those changes, I was able to start seeing fat loss pretty quickly. And that kind of just summarizes the last, you know, the first six weeks maybe of this challenge was just literally just optimizing the lifestyle I already had because it was, because it was already pretty healthy at the time and it just really came down to, okay, what can I optimize? I'm already doing a lot well, what can I improve on? So I really got, I got pretty far into the challenge without having to cut calories. One sec. Oh, thanks Gary. So uh, when I hit later on in the challenge, it was probably in the last, somewhere in the last four weeks, I did decide to actually officially go into more of a deficit, which is technically a diet. I do not recommend petite women start by dieting. And the reason why, if you've watched any of my, video, any of my videos, is because most of the time petite women, we have slower metabolisms. And if we go straight into a diet without working on our metabolism, you'd be eating like 1200 calories a day. And not only will that slow down your metabolism, make you really hungry, make you feel really low energy and not help you achieve your goals of building muscle and losing fat, but it's also just not healthy for you overall. So once you raise your metabolism by strength training and eating more foods, then when you do a diet in the way that I did it through this challenge, you have a lot of room to cut, much like a taller person has a lot of room to cut. So starting at 2000 calories, I could shave off 200 calories and start losing weight at 1800 calories rather than 1200. 
Do you guys see how big of a difference that is? Like eating 1800 calories a day versus 1200 is huge in terms of how much I can eat, how satiated I feel. Um, and for that reason, it's made this challenge really easy. I haven't really felt like I've been on a diet at any point and that has been a huge win for me and this is why i teach petite women to take a metabolic approach first because if you work on that metabolic health it's going to be so much easier and also enjoyable as a lifestyle to cut calories and then the the other reason why it's so important to take this route is because i can live and and maintain these results at you know 15 to 800 18 15 to 8 i can't talk I can maintain these results at 1500 to 1800 calories per day. That's a lot of food to eat still and keep the results that I've, you know, that I have achieved. If I were dieting down to 1000 calories a day, 1200 calories a day and I lost weight, I would have to stay there forever to keep those results and that would not be sustainable, fun or in any way a lifestyle that I want to live or would recommend anyone lives. So what's great is that I can, you know, stay even if I've I've shaved off a couple hundred calories, I'm still eating enough food. I still have enough calories I can eat in a day for, you know, to enjoy my lifestyle and feel good and maintain and keep my results in the long run. As far as my progress photos, I think this is the most interesting thing because there's a huge reduction in my body fat around my thighs. My thighs tend to change in size a lot depending on, you know, basically my nutrition, if I'm eating in a, in a surplus, if I'm, you know, just eating at maintenance. Um, and when I did this challenge, I saw a huge reduction in the circumference of my thighs and I took measurements and this is what I got. So I have it pulled up right here on my computer. I saw about a half an inch I lost in my thighs, which is a lot, I feel like. I lost about a full inch in my hips um, and I lost about three inches on my waist around my belly button. So overall, I saw a lot of body fat reduction. It was interesting to see it go from my thighs because typically with my history of being a competitive fencer and just being quad dominant, it's hard for me to change the kind of look of my thighs. Um, you guys, if you've seen my old video, I did a video on um, losing muscle and fat in your thighs via body recomposition that I did that experiment over a year ago when I retired from fencing full time and wanted to see a more symmetrical development in my, you know, in my muscle and my body composition. And so I was just familiar with how my body kind of reacts to these changes and I didn't expect it to change at all. And that's totally fine because I love my quads and I love how muscular, you know, my quads are. I love how developed and strong they are um, and athletic. Um, but it, there was surprisingly a pretty significant visible reduction and you guys can see in the photos and the before and after in just 11 weeks, it really shrunk. That really surprised me. The other thing that was really awesome to see was I had a lot of strength goals and I still do and I was able to increase my strength pretty significantly even though I entered that caloric deficit, you know, some number of weeks in. And I think I'm going to attribute this to the fact that I never had to get too low in calories because my metabolism was so stoked, which was pretty cool. I brought my deadlift to about 155, 65 pounds um, and that's still, there's still a lot of room to grow being at 155 pounds for a deadlift, but previously I was lifting like 115 I wasn't pushing myself and in my chest press I was able to increase my bench from like 65 pounds to 105 so there's still a lot of room for growth there too but all of my lifts have seen a huge improvement in strength and typically when you're in a caloric deficit it can be harder to make those strength gains but I was still able to add more weight to the bar every week you know, grab a spotter when I needed one and see awesome progress. So I'm really proud that I did this experiment and I was able to kind of keep my calories high enough so that I could lose fat. Clearly I was in a deficit while also gaining strength in the gym, increasing the load each week and increasing my lifts. So in terms of my nutrition, I did do carb cycling throughout this entire challenge. Um, it's something that helped me just with allocating the nutrition throughout this challenge i also did do carb cycling which basically just means that i ate higher number of carbs on days that i trained versus days that i rested and 
that worked really well for me. I just found that padding, you know, having more carbs on training days helped fuel my workouts. It's also what probably helped me make gains in the gym despite being in a deficit. And then on my rest days when I didn't need as much sugars and I wasn't as hungry, I just didn't have as many carbs. And there's no exact magic number for this. You'll play with it, but it doesn't have to be a huge difference in carbs. For example, if you're eating 200 grams of carbs per day, again, this is not what I'm telling you to do, it's gonna vary depending on your goals and who you are and your height and all of these things. But let's just say you're eating 200 grams of carbs on a training day. On a rest day, you might have a little bit less, 180 grams of carbs, 170 grams of carbs. It can help to cycle out the carbs based on your activity level. And throughout the challenge, I always ate PFF, which stands for protein, healthy fats, and fibrous carbs. That's what I teach my clients. That's what works the best to keep your body and your metabolism in fat burning mode. I made sure I had protein at every single meal. I made sure it was high sources, high quality sources of protein. So yogurts and salmon and chicken breast and turkey and you know cottage cheeses. I also used a collagen powder, um, vitamin, um, vital proteins, collagen, peptides, my favorite one. So just making sure I prioritize protein, which also helped keep me full. I got enough healthy fats in, whether that was through the oils I was cooking with or more high fiber options like avocado, have, you know, peanut butters and, you know, good sources of healthy fats. And I made sure I had fibrous carbs, a lot of vegetables as well as starchy carbs. I, you know, I had my higher glycemic index carbs like granolas and sugary carbs, bananas. And I'm really proud of this. I managed to have one treat per day throughout this entire thing, which was either like a biscotti or a brownie, something that I fit into my macros, um, which just helped keep me sane. And also eating out helped keep me sane, you know, like once a week, just going out and eating and enjoying a meal, enjoying a cheeseburger, something that you wouldn't normally eat when you're being more aware of your portion sizes and quality of your nutrition also helped keep me on track. I didn't do that every week, but when I found myself feeling like I needed to, you know, take a break and just really in indulge and enjoy food, I didn't restrict myself from that. I made sure that I kept that balance, that I kept my mindset in a good place. And this is a huge thing that I see, you know, p women and men do when they start dieting or they start a fitness or health challenge. They just go for the extremes. They restrict everything and they end up being so hungry and so deprived that they just cave in and kind of sabotage their own results. So the biggest takeaway that I think that you guys could take from this is if you're setting up a plan for yourself, make sure that you just build in treats and rewards and you're going to learn how much is too much versus how much you can get away with. And it's kind of all about maximizing what you can get away with while still getting results. For me, I was able to have dessert every day. Is it like a plate of desserts? No, but was it enough that I felt satiated and happy and not deprived? Absolutely. So I think just striking that balance can also be really, really important for you and your long-term results. I would love to hear from you guys what questions you have about my journey so far. Um, let me know in the comments below. I will answer them. Any questions about my nutrition or health. It has been so fun doing this challenge and I'm not done yet. Speaking of which, I think I'm gonna extend it for a little while longer just because I'm really enjoying it and I'm on such a good roll, but I do have to work on kind of reassessing my goals, get some new strength goals, figure out when to just level out my calories and maintain. And hopefully I'll be able to stay at, you know, like I said, 1500 to 1800 calories per day and maintain my new weight, which is the goal. And that would be perfect as a petite woman. And yeah, let me know what questions you have any, if this inspired you to um, start your own fitness and health challenge. And I will see you guys next week. Remember to give us a like if you learned something and you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content tailored to petite women. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.